Now, live from Capitol Hill, more on the economy, reaction to the president's speech, and the Republicans' plan to block the implementation of Obamacare. Let's bring in Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz. Senator, thanks for being here. Brad, it's great to join you. Senator, first of all, your reaction to the president's speech today, did you see it? Did you read it? What did you think? Well, I, I read the transcript, and I thought it was, you know, this is what, his 18th, 19th so-called pivot to jobs. Uh, listen, the number one priority, I think, of every elected official is Republican or Democrat should be restoring economic growth. But, but the unhappy truth is, in the last four years, our economy has grown, on average, 0.9% a year. Uh, you know, these last four years have been, I've referred to it as the great stagnation. And, and it has been President Obama's policies that have been killing jobs, out of control taxes and spending and regulation. And what is his proposal today? Yet more spending and taxes and regulation. That doesn't fix the problem, it makes it worse. Uh, Senator, he used the word uh, phony scandals today. Um, uh, the White House has used that term a number of times. Your thoughts about that? Well, you know, I think it's interesting that he calls them phony scandals when at the time they broke, he pro pro uh, professed to be concerned about them. When he discovered that the IRS was wrongfully targeting his political enemies, and, and we now know that, that, that with at, at, at least the tacit, if not explicit, approval of one of his top political appointees, he claimed he was shocked and would get to the bottom of it. And, and following the pattern of this administration, he gives one speech about it and then quickly says, let's brush it under the carpet, nothing to see here. It's the same pattern he's followed with Benghazi. Uh, it's a pattern over and over again uh, of wanting to avoid accountability. And I think it's unfortunate to see the executive abusing power and disregarding the law. A theme he hit numerous times today, Senator, was it's not enough for Republicans just to oppose me. You have to have ideas. Uh, how do you respond to that? Uh, look, I think that's absolutely right. I can tell you my top priority in office is restoring economic growth. Uh, you know, there's only one other period since World War II where we've had four consecutive years of less than 1% economic growth and, uh, on average. And that was 1979 to 1982. That was coming out of the Jimmy Carter administration. It was the same failed policies, out of control spending, out of control taxes, out of control regulation, produced the exact same stagnation. So, Brett, how do we fix it? We fix it, number one, by finally reining in the out-of-control spending. Number two, fundamental tax reform, simplifying the tax code, and I think ultimately and critically abolishing the IRS. And number three, regulatory reform, lifting the enormous burden of regulations. And nothing is more important in regulatory reform than repealing every word of Obamacare, which I'm fighting every day to do. On that point, uh, you, uh, Senator Lee, Senator Rubio, are send, have sent a letter to, to the Senate Majority Leader saying that you want to repeal Obamacare tied to the debt ceiling. Here is uh, Representative Tom Cole today uh, yep. reacting to that. It seems to me there's appropriate ways to deal with the law, but shutting down the government uh, to uh, you know get your way over an unrelated piece of legislation is the political equivalent of throwing a temper tantrum. It's just not helpful, and I think it's the sort of thing that could create a backlash that could cost the Republicans the majority in the House, which is after all the last line of defense against the president, and could. Uh, materially undercut the ability of Republicans in the Senate to capture the majority uh, in uh, 2014, which I think they have a decent chance to do. Senator Roy Blunt said something similar, not exact same words, on another channel today. Uh, your thoughts? Well, let, let, me, let me make three points. Number one, Obamacare isn't working. In, in the words of its lead author in the Senate, Democratic Senator Max Baucus, it is headed towards a major train wreck which is why President Obama had to admit failure by unilaterally delaying the employer mandate until after the next election because it's not working and Democrats are scared of electoral accountability. Number two, if we want to stop this train wreck from hitting hardworking American families, the time to do so is now. What the administration desperately wants is to get to January, to get the exchanges in place, to get the subsidies in place. And by the way, they've, they've eliminated any eligibility tests, so they want to get people hooked on Obamacare so that it can never be unwound. If we're going to repeal it, we've got to do so now, or it will remain with us forever. But number three, most importantly, we have an opportunity in the next 68 days 
to actually defund Obamacare. The most important check and balance the Constitution gives Congress over an overreaching executive is the power of the purse. And the continuing resolution that funds Congress expires on September 30th. I've publicly stated, as has Mike Lee, as has Marco Rubio and a number of other senators, that I will not vote for any continuing resolution that funds even a single penny of Obamacare. And, and the difference, Brett, is we've had 39, 40, 41 symbolic votes in Congress against Obamacare. Care. None of those meant a whole lot because none of them did anything. If Republicans stand together, if we get 41 Republicans in the Senate or 218 Republicans in the House who stand together and say, we will not vote to affirmatively fund Obamacare, we can get this done now. But the only way that's going to happen is if the American grassroots, if conservatives come together and demand that of our elected officials, because right now we don't have the votes, but if the people demand it, that's going to change. Okay, you know you could be in a fight within your own party on this front. Look, I think so many Americans are frustrated with career politicians in both parties. You don't get a $17 trillion debt without a whole lot of bipartisan cooperation, without a whole lot of Democrats trying to spend way too much money and a whole lot of Republicans going along with it. And, right. and well, Senator, we really appreciate your time. We'll have you back. Thank you. I look forward to it. Thank you, Brett.